Bam! Today's tune is one of the new cars added in 1.27, which is the 2020 Alfa Romeo Giulia GTAM. I spent a number of days working on this tune because the car is fairly amazing stock, but I found it just doesn't handle crisp. I found that I had a lot of understeer, and even when tuned to a higher level, the car just didn't feel great. This is one car that actually seemed to be set at a great level to start with, and the more I adjusted it, the better it felt. So if you're new to Tokyo, or just avoid it due to the penalties, just be aware they did relax the mass of penalties for wall taps, so it's really not a bad race at all anymore. Honestly, with the right tunes, this track is likely your quickest and best way to grind credits, and it'll give you some variety as well. So this video is going to cover the tune, some highs and lows of the car, and my overall thoughts on the Julia and GT7. After a bunch of work, I landed on the setup for Tokyo. Overall, for the highlights, its exhaust note and rasp with the upgraded parts is incredible. I love how this car sounds specifically on Tokyo in the overpass and tunnel sections. Another thing I really like about this car is the styling. So we don't see a lot of Alphas in North America, so I personally find this car quite unique. It's also got an 8-speed transmission and can top out at about 185 miles per hour, which is perfect for the Tokyo Strait. And the car feels planted, so as much as it's sluggish to corner, it's easy to predict the handling on pretty much all corners, it's super stable, and even with a fully customized LSD, it does a great job of handling the power. One other thing to note is that this car is just great in terms of tire wear. You can run the whole race on sport hards if you want with no change needed, which is relatively rare in game. In terms of opportunities, my main issue was the stock handling. The car out of the gate handles sluggish, I found it's difficult to find the right balance for the car. When more power was applied, I really did enjoy it, but unfortunately its mileage isn't great for endurance. So good news is if you like this tune and you want to ride in this car at a higher level, it should be pretty much ready to go. Just adjust the engine output and change the tires, but the fundamental tune is built to 700 performance points levels and above. Like I mentioned initially, I was building this car to compete at a higher level. I've actually de spec'd the car somewhat to get it to qualify for Tokyo, which does seem counterintuitive, but I just liked how the car felt better at 600. So this one's personal preference. I've run this exact suspension with more power and it felt great, it just didn't have the fuel economy that I wanted. The only other major drawback on the car is the acceleration is about on parity with other cars in this class. This means you'll have to ensure that you have clean cornering when using this car, as the bulkier time will be made holding a much higher speed through the corners and reducing your pit time. So a bit about the Julia. In 2020, special editions were made to celebrate the 110th anniversary of Alfa Romeo. These cars were called the Julia GTA and the GTA M, which were the high performance versions based, and forgive me here, on the Quadrifoglio model. For these cars, power output was increased to 533 horsepower, which came from a 2.9 twin turbo V6. To handle that power, the front and rear track of the car were widened by two inches, and the car's overall aero profile was also dramatically improved. So Sauber, Alfa Romeo's F1 partner, actually helped with some designs in this case. The GTA M is actually even more hardcore, and this is the version we have in the game as of 1.27. Additional carbon fiber parts were used, which includes the front splitter, rear wing, accents like mirrors and fenders, and a roll cage was added and the rear seats removed to reduce the weight. The car is really stunning to look at, it's got some great styling cues, and overall it's something unique and very different in game. There really isn't too many other powerful sedans in game, and this one was a nice surprise on this update. So let's talk about the tune and overall performance. As mentioned, it's been detuned on power, but cornering and handling is much improved, so stat changes from stock. Horsepower is now 486, the car has 406 pounds of torque. It's a relatively heavy car weighing over 2700 pounds after the weight reduction. Acceleration is on par with stock, top speed and cornering are all improved. For performance parts, the car maintains some aero options from GT Audio, including front type A and a rear spoiler. And here's what those are in case you're curious of the specific ones I used for this build. It's got sports hard tires, fully customized suspension, fully customized LSD, a full control computer, a power restrictor and ballast, a fully customized manual transmission, and racing components including air filter, muffler, exhaust manifold, brakes and pads, and a brake balance controller. Medium turbo with anti-leg is set to strong, and it also has a racing intercooler. So this tune has just a few permanent upgrades that I've added, so these include weight reduction stage 3 and increased body rigidity. So for adjustments, the bulk of this work on this tune goes into the suspension, making the car a bit more aggressive. I've adjusted everything on this tune, more so just to improve its response time. It's still a bit tricky in wet road conditions, but you'll notice after lap 2 it really holds the road well. You can take the S-curves under full power for the most part, and it's a blast to toss around the sweeping corners. 
The other main focus area was on the arrow performance. We dramatically improved the arrow to help it hold those corners, and as a result, it can deliver 2 minute 12 seconds to 2 minute 14 seconds lap times, depending on your fuel mapping. So overall, this car is another hit with the update, and I quite like driving it. It just took a lot of work to get it to that spot where I felt it was worthy of a video. It's a capable touring car and one that surprised me once I figured out where to position it. So for the race strategy for Tokyo, I'm going to go in a bit more detail than normal, just because I want to make it simple and give you guys as much info as needed if you're using this to grind credits. So start it with fuel mapping 6 and hold that for 2-3 to three laps. There are two reasons for this. The first one is, it'll get you to a point where you can just single pit for the race, giving you a massive advantage. And the second reason is the track is wet at the start of this event, so you're not really gaining a bunch of time by pushing the mapping higher. Just take the economy, and then lean in much harder once you're on lap 3. So halfway through lap 3, you're to start a lap 4, crank the fuel mapping down to fuel 1, and leave it there for the rest of the race. This puts you into the single pit strategy and gives you top laps at the end of the race where the track conditions are best. As mentioned, you can skip swapping tires on your pit stop. You can swap if you prefer. I've won doing both, although not swapping is likely a better option. You'll see the tire wear will be about 25% when you pit, so you're not really losing anything by keeping the starting set on the car for the entire race. After that last pit, just focus on keeping speed in the corners. I guarantee you'll like how it handles on the track once it's dry. So to pick up this car, it's available from the brand dealership. It is pretty pricey for the performance. This car is stock 220000 It is a different vibe from other cars in the update, so while it is expensive, if you're comparing it to the performance of the C8, it's just a completely driving experience and it's really not comparable. As always, the tune here, you can make that back and more within about 30 minutes of driving. In terms of delivery, I didn't do any livery on this car. I actually kept the stock paint because I like the color. There are already about 15 pages of livery, so feel free to check them out. This car has some great stock carbon fiber options as well, so keeping it relatively stock, I thought it looked good. I hope you enjoyed this tune and this car finds a spot in your garage. If you like these tunes, please like and comment below, as it greatly helps with my channel growth on YouTube, and it helps let me know what you guys enjoy. If you're looking to connect with others around gaming in general, feel free to join our Discord. You can find more info on GT7, tunes, or just a great community. As always, thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.